Omegyantimidandasya gena jena salakaya chaksu un militam yena tasmai shi guru venamaha ma om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shimakti bhakti vedanta swaminiti namini namaste saraswati deve gorvani pacharine nevrsai sasunyavari pasthyatya devi sitarne vila prabhupad ki ja so, after listening to Salinas Romapad Swami speak, I couldn't think of anything else to say. <laughs> Covered everything and with such thoroughness that all I can do is try to look for some places I could fill in. <laughs> but I'll try because that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> um, there's a word that Prabhupada would often use to describe the characteristic or the innate characteristic of a human being. He would say it's paropaka. <laughs> paropaka. Translated means to do good to others. <laughs> he said this is actually the business of the human form of life. To think how to help others, to serve others, to do to act in such a way that others will become benefited. And in the material world, you see, that goes on. But you see, as it's going on in the material world, there's a motivation behind it, and that is someone is looking for some reciprocation, some benefit, some remuneration, something in order to you know, inspire others in whatever way that inspiration can be helpful. So in other words, in the material world, people are motivated by personal interest. And that's just the way the material world is. Only in when one comes to devotional service that one can be free from that motivation because the satisfaction that a devotee gets is their relationship with Krishna and the service that they do in order to serve the Lord and serve the Lord's devotee. So that is satisfying enough. And therefore the devotee doesn't look for anything when we engage in devotional service. Of course that is considered pure devotional service. The Maharaj was talking about purity. And Prabhupada makes that point that purity is an element that is very attractive. Uh, now when we say purity, we don't necessarily mean coming to the stage of becoming a pure devotee, because actually the soul is by nature pure. So that is already there as our constitutional position. We haven't realized that because of our still struggling with the material energy, still have some desires to fulfill on a material platform. But purity can be practiced at any level when we simply act according to the principles of purity. And that is uh, what is called sadachar, or proper behavior, proper uh, understanding of what it means to practice devotional service in a way that one becomes a force that attracts others simply by their behavior. Of course, as Maharaj mentioned, uh, there are means by which that behavior is exhibited and how we institute and organize various types of programs in order to attract people to Krishna consciousness. But I think the underlying element is our own, what we say, purity that makes that attraction attractive. <laughs> and I think that was what Maharaj was really hitting on, that aside from everything we do, it's all about ourselves. <laughs> Coming to that stage is the more we understand and apply and actually realize the activities of devotional service, the more we become what is called self-effulgence, or we may automatically attracting 
in other words, whatever we say, whatever we do, or how we interact with others, or just in our general behavior, it becomes an attractive force. And the opposite, which breaks that, and which was, of course, one of Maharaj's main point, is like the different flames, using that analogy that we all are like flames. In other words, we all have some light. We all have something to give to others and something that we have already gained for ourselves. But as a society, it is more like building that fire, which is the unity of the flames. So finding ways to work together in order to offer what we can, what we already have to others. And that is um, the, the quality and characteristic of a devotee. There is one story, it's not a very pleasant thing, but it's a message. I think I heard this story a few times when I was in Chicago. I spent 17 years in the Kishore Kishari Temple as the unresident resident sannyasi. They used to call me the unresident resident. Because I was supposed to be there, but I wasn't. But once in a while I'd check in. So in that time period, I would hear different things. And one of the things is a story where, not a story, it's just a little situation where one, one young man, he was coming to the temple, not this temple, but another temple regularly. And uh, so the devotees were noticing that he was coming more, becoming more more attracted, and then coming regularly, hearing the classes, and also taking part in the programs. But after some time, they thought, well, you know, he looks like he's really interested, and he's been coming. But, you know, he doesn't make any more effort to go beyond just visiting and taking part. So they said, well, why don't you move in? He was a young man with, with no family attachments and everything. And he said something that shocked the devotees, but it was a wake-up call. <laughs> He said, you know, I see how you treat your guests, and I see how you treat each other. I think I would rather stay a guest. So he was noticing that although we had something nice to offer, and he was inspired, our behavior amongst each other was not very, what we say, congenial to a community or a society that is supposed to be what we say, synergenic, or off working in such a way that we are supporting each other. Perhaps that's due to his either cultural or backgrounds or maybe even economic situation. In other words, we might see differences on a material level. It becomes a little bit harder to, or not, becomes a somewhat of a mental block and working together, but that's material, that's material. So keeping Prabhupada in the center means keeping Prabhupada's books as the foundation by which we construct ourselves. And Prabhupada always emphasized the importance of cooperation. He said that you will show your love for me, how much you cooperate together in order to bring Krishna consciousness to others. That's a very powerful force. The reason why is that when Krishna sees that devotees are in that mood of working together, and to do that means that we have to somehow or other get past our own ways of thinking that we know everything, and it's my way or the highway. <laughs> Sometimes we think like that. We have to see that what is the, what is the center? The center is to please Srila Prabhupada and to please Krishna. And to understand that means to understand the process by which we can act in such a way 
that to get by all of these material conceptions that are actually blocking our ways of working together and come to the understanding. There's a beautiful verse, or actually it's a purport in the Srimad Bhagavatam, where um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu himself, is congratulating the nine Prachetas, who are all brothers, sons of King Purita Prachini Barhishat. And uh, he's congratulating them for their, for their quality of friendliness amongst each other and their unity in that friendliness. And the Lord ends that congratulations by, he said, I'm so pleased with you. Please take a benediction from me. The Lord himself is offering a benediction just because he's seeing that the unity of uh, great, uh, great souls is so wonderful that even the Lord is inspired to want to give a benediction to those engaged in that way. And Prabhupada goes into the discussion of this principle of unity and diversity. Unity is, our, is, our, is on a couple of levels. One is that we are all spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna. We have different bodies, maybe different backgrounds or different ways of seeing the same thing. But these are not principles of unity. These are the elements of diversity, but this diversity can be somewhat amalgamated into the principle of unity when we all are understanding, we're all trying to achieve the same thing. We're trying to achieve devotion to Krishna. So that diversity may manifest in different ways, but the unity is the foundation by which we keep our connection with each other and the diversity is just different ways of expressing our way to serve the, the Lord. But Prabhupada says sometimes even in the society of uh, devotees, we see there is some disunity. But then he goes and he mentions two principles that probably are the cause of disunity. One, he says, leaning towards material things. <laughs> In other words, if there's a material motivation for our activities in devotional service, it may cause us to see others as competitors rather than, you know, companions. So, and then he says, of course, uh, devotees have different ways of expressing their service, so we should accept that. And that difference in, in expression is just the, the variety. Just like in a garden, you have so many flowers, and the flowers are different shapes, different colors, different aromas, and differently placed. Just like if you have a, just like you see that beautiful, uh, I think Roma Padmaras was pointing out that to yesterday, it was right next to Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa San, one on each side. And you see that the flowers are there, but it's enhanced by the background of the greenery. And the way these flowers are pray, placed, each one of the flowers becomes a, a, a part of a whole picture that is very beautiful. So that is, that's an example of unity and diversity. So we are like that. We're all kinds of flowers, and some of us have more fragrance than the others. <laughs> and more difference in the way we exhibit our, our devotion. But that should be accepted as a, a means of diversity. And keeping Krishna and Krishna's instructions, and as Romapad Maharaj mentions, we, to do that we need to understand the process, and that is Srila Prabhupada's teachings. So read these books, understand these books, ask questions based on this knowledge, and then everything becomes clear. When you have clear vision, then it's easy to move forward in, in Krishna consciousness. When it becomes confusing, or we start to we start to speculate about what is the meaning of of devotional activities, or we interject our own ideas, and then that purity becomes somewhat lost, and then it becomes more individualistic. And so we've seen that, and of course you see that in, in, in material society, people cannot unite. 
So the result of that is there more and more diversity. Diversity continues to expand itself because people find it hard to unite because they have no center. Hmm. Prabhupada would use the example of the United Nations. They came together in order to work together to bring peace in the world. But as Prabhupada was said, the flags are only increasing and everyone comes with their own personal national agenda. So it was a f complete failure because the, the, the center is not there. <laughs> so this, our center is to please Krishna, to follow Srila Prabhupada's instructions. And as, of course, the, the topic of today is that to be a devotee means to give that opportunity to others. Prabhupada said there's two kinds of devotees. One who always only thinks about their own spiritual advancement and focuses on that exclusively. And others who think, work on their own, of course, that it's required because what, what you have is what you can give. And at the same time, always think, not only think, but plan, and this is important to understand, how to give that to others. Because if we think, well, yes, I'm friendly, I like to help others, and when I get the opportunity, that's not good enough. You have to make plans to do it. <laughs> you have to make programs, plans, and ideas, and organize amongst each other to do it. And when you do that, you'll see that synergy starts to build and things start to happen. That's how this temple happened. I came here last year, about a year ago. Premananda was giving me a little tour, and, and it was just, you know, the walls were on, the floors were on, but that was it. It was still a shell yet. But in this last year, it was amazing. I was telling this to the devotees yesterday, and you know, some were also responding in the same way. How fast in this one year this temple came from. It was incredible. And I, I could understand simply by, you know, the principle that of community and unity was really strong. And when you have a leader who knows how to bring that together and is willing to sacrifice for that, then that inspires everyone to follow. So we want to thank Premananda for her, her hard work. I'm sure she had a wonderful team behind her. And uh, the way she was inviting me here was to make sure I didn't forget. So I was, I thank you very much for your continual encouragement <laughs> because I needed that. <laughs> and that, that, that's what really inspired me to come was her enthusiasm. <laughs> so, yeah, and as Rupa Goswami explains, we have everything, but when you add the principle of enthusiasm, and then everything becomes very attractive. And what is that enthusiasm? Is to very carefully follow the process given by our acharyas and work in that way to make the activities in devotional service attractive to Krishna, to the spiritual master, and to people in general. I'll end by just saying one thing, um, just like somebody asked me yesterday. Um, you know, when we were on the altar, what is the most important thing we can do for this temple in order to, you know, keep our focus on moving forward? And I just said, you know, first I said, try to give your love to Krishna. But then I thought of a practical thing. I said, keep everything spotlessly revolutionary clean. <laughs> Because cleanliness is preaching. <laughs> when people come and see how clean it is, they want to come back. So that's one of the best ways to, uh, you know, bring people in and to keep them in. Keep everything nice, neat, clean, and uh, everyone should participate in that. And that's the way to show our enthusiasm to bring more and more people in. Thank you. Hila Prabhupad ki jai.
take the microphone. Here's somebody that came for the temple opening all the way from Houston, Texas. But his parents live here in this area. Go ahead. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. So you were talking about purity being the force. And in the ashram, we talk a lot about whether purity comes first, second, or third. Do we have to go out on books to get purified? Do we go out on books and get purified? Or do we... All right, what order did I go in? Uh, purity first, second, or third? Does it, you know, does it come before or after, along with preaching, doing books like that? Let me say back what I think you're asking. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yes. Does, does purity come first, and then we go and preach, or do we go and preach and somehow purity just descends from the sky or something like that? Exactly. Something like that. Our, we have, when we go, when we, life, human life is a life of responsibility, and we're responsible for our own spiritual well-being and purity and progress. And then we're social beings also. We're, we're mandated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and our founder Acharya, whatever your condition, Om Apavitra Pavitrova Sarva Samgato Piva, whatever your condition is, one can become purified yasmarat pundarikaksham by remembering the lotus eyed personality of Godhead. So as we go forward to help remind people of Krishna that act helps us become purified. And what is that purification is remembering what we've forgotten. Because remembering what we've forgotten, that's the state of purity. So it's not which comes first, it's the purposefulness with which we're, we do, reminding people of Krishna, knowing that that will help me remember Krishna. To t take it in a, in a different context. Before we go A or B, before we go on Harinam Sankirtan, we should become pure devotees. Or by going on Harinam Sankirtan, it'll help us become pure and simultaneously help others become pure by hearing the holy name. Now, both are becoming benefited. One, who is, one whose consciousness has achieved a degree of purity, that they're, they're, the effectiveness of their reminding others of what they have forgotten will be greater. Same thing as I said before, you can't give something to somebody you don't have. So whatever bhakti you have, whatever bhakti I have and anyone else in the room has, we try to give that in, in, in a mood of service unto the disciplic succession, the ones who are engaging us in these activities. So that's the, the purposefulness is important. So that when the purposefulness is, is the, when the light's on, you can give light to others. So go forward to become pure, knowing that that's also going to be beneficial to them, to others who you interact with, to the degree that you are pure. 
So they're not which come first, they both come. But the purposefulness is important. We're not going forward as crusaders to rescue people. You know, we, have, we first save ourselves. But that save ourselves is included in that package of saving ourselves is being instruments of someone greater than us. There, there's, we're servants of a master. And the master for all of us is our founder, Acharya, and the disciplic succession, and we're servants of them. In that mode, go forward. And you be, that way you become pure, and others will benefit also. What, when I just saying it simply, I said a lot. Here's its simple form. Bhakti Siddhanta told Srila Prabhupada, take this message to the English-speaking parts of the world, for by so doing, they will benefit and you will benefit also. Now that's a message to a pure devotee, but the message is the same for us. Beneficial for us and for them at the same time. Then the, the, the variable is the mindfulness or the purpose for which you're doing that activity as an instrument or as a rescuer. We're not rescuers, we're instruments. There's a question up front. You take this one. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you spoke about devotee care uh, as a part of uh, bringing people souls closer to bhakti. Can you elaborate a little more on devotee care aspect of bringing? The question is a little bit more about devotee care. Well, that you know that we have actually have programs in order to facilitate devotee care, but you can also do it on an individual basis. That individual basis means if you can find some way to serve the devotee, whether it's giving prashadam, they might have, might have some material turmoil, and if you can help and to help them understand how to, you know, solve that situation. In other words, to do good to others, to help people, whatever the, the need is, to be aware of that is there. We Everyone is struggling on some level, it's a fact. So devotee care means to be there for when people have situations where they, they need some help. And these things come up and they become obvious after some time. But as a program of devotee care, we try to, as Srila Radhanath Maharaj says, to figure out what a devotee needs in, in their course of execution devotional service that will take him to the point of going back home, back to Godhead association, um, even material help. Like sometimes a devotee will be in a financial strait and need something in order to stabilize their material life so they can practice Krishna consciousness more, you know, or more fo with more focus. So if we can help in that way, that would also be good. A kind word is another way to get me how to inspire devotees, not, you know, not flattery, but inspire devotees by just being friendly, being open, being available, being kind. Uh, that is the nature of devotee. The 26 qualities of the devotee is mentioned in the first principle. His devotee is kind to all living entities. That is the first of the 26 that are mentioned. So that kindness comes in the form of inspiring others in their Krishna consciousness or assisting them in whatever they need to engage in devotional service. That can be done on an individual level. We found that for years many devotees were trying to do that, but it was falling short until we actually developed as a society a devotee care system. We started to see what are the possible things that, are, uh, that a devotee needs in order to make progress to devotional service. And we put that in, in a formula 
by which there were branches of activities where a devotee could go and get that particular need somewhere. Like, you know, if someone was looking for a husband or a wife, there would be a system where they could put their names into a group, uh, and then people would be in charge of, you know, trying to understand and you may be connecting people based on the information they receive. That's just one example I was using. Or the body is struggling with how to execute Krishna consciousness. Come, he still comes, he still comes to the classes. We can't, cannot sort out their problems. As Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati makes the point, he says the one-on-one -on -one connection is more effective than the platform speaker. You can make more of a difference in the life of a person by taking time with them than we do when we give our general lectures. Of course, the general lectures are important. That is our process, and we do that. And that's necessary, and it's also beneficial. But when you sit down with someone and you listen and try to understand, and if you can find ways or have resources by which you can help them. Just like I used, to, I used to go with Bhakti Tirta Swami a lot. And he would always be meeting devotees throughout the day. And then I would see when they would come out, they were changed. They, were, they would go in with some difficulty. So I said to Maharaj, I said, what do you say to him? <laughs> what do you tell him? He said, I don't tell him anything. I just listen. He said, they need somebody to talk to. <laughs> Just by listening, being empathetic, and being there for a person's problems, is more than half the problem is already solved. So I just as an example of how we can be an instrument in, in Krishna's plan to bring devotees closer to Krishna. Yeah. Okay? Did you get that part? Okay, I want to make sure before we go on to another area. Let me amplify something you said. Something he just said. Bhakti Tirtha Swami example. Uh, about two hours ago, I was going over the section of Ramayana, many nice lessons of life. When Dasarath wanted to, he became inspired to have his son Ram become the king. So he went to the, the leading ministers and learned people and brahmanas and everybody. What did they think? So that's an example. But then they, they it was Ram should become the next king. And then it was, actually we want Ram more than you. <laughs> and then it was, but wait a minute, we're, we're like, calves that were born from the same cow and the cow isn't sure which calf to go to so we can't choose between you two but we want Ram as the next king so then Dasara said tell me the reasons why you want Ram as your next king it's really nice and one of the things that Maharaj just said is one of the things that they said about Ram you know, he has he has skill, but then one of his skills was listening. And they said, some people, when you go to them, they'll listen. But Ram doesn't wait for people to come to him. He goes to people. And when he goes to people, he just listens. He's not there to fix their problem. He's there so they feel heard. And when they feel hurt, he cries and fix the problem. When they're joyful, he celebrates the joy with them. And so he's connecting with their hearts, with them, because he cares about them and their well-being without necessarily fixing the problem. So devotee care means like that. That's the, uh, it's a quality of a leader, which Bhakti Tirtha Swami wrote about and modeled very nicely. Thank you. Just amplifying. 
Somebody else out there. One more. If there's no more, that's fine too. Okay. We can count and go for Hari. And your mother too. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for the very uh, enlivening and inspiring talk. I was um, uh, reflecting that when we are trying to help others, then sometimes we uh, uh, um, in trying to help others, we tend to slip ourselves. So how can we avoid slipping ourselves? Slip? Slip? Uh, slip, slipping ourselves. So I was thinking um, uh, it's so easy to to, um, as we're advancing on the path of spiritual life, to slip. Uh, like Bharat Maharaj, uh, you know, in trying to help the deer, uh, fell in love with the deer rather than Krishna. So how can we avoid this, uh, this process of slipping? Associate with Gopal Hari and you'll do fine. Because you're Gopal Hari Das. You associate with Gopal Hari, and you're in good shape. So, the, there's danger in doing nothing, and there's danger in doing something, because the world we live in is a dangerous place. Therefore, when you're doing something, be aware that there's danger in your doing something. And therefore, the, the protection against slipping is the purpose for which you're doing. Bharat Maharaj was a Kshatriya. So it's natural and appropriate that he, do, he did what he did. The deer was in, the fawn was without a mother. So he did what a chhatri would do. He'd give protection. Chhatris give protection. Give protection is good. Whether you're a chhatri or not, giving protection according to your position and capacity is good as part of devotee care. And the protection is bhakti. Bhakti means for whom are you doing? For whom are we building this temple? For whom are we whatever? Sitting here in, before the deity, hearing karikata. For, for what's, what, what's, the, what's the mission? What's the, so when that's clear and you, you're striving to stay in the mood and the mission, that's bhakti and you're protected. But if the protection principle slackens, then you're susceptible to slipping, as you using it. That was the word you were using, right? Slip and fall, like that. So, stay purposeful of what's the mission. When we're you know, back to the topic. Ooh. Back to the topic of bringing souls closer to Krishna. We're instruments in bringing souls closer to Krishna. We're instruments. And the, the mission of bringing souls closer to Krishna is the mission of disciplic succession. And we're just instruments. We're not rescuers. We're instruments of some persons much greater than us. And to the degree that that, that mission is, is in the mind, is when bhakti is there, there's protection. And if bhakti slackens, then we're at risk. It doesn't mean we're necessarily going to slip and fall, but we're at risk. Do nothing, we're at risk. So don't do nothing, do something. Be instruments, nimitta matram. I think we should end.